hope you are all having a fantastic day. It's a beautiful, warm, sunny day here in New York City. My name is Jamie Lee, as you know. I'm a leadership and negotiation coach. I help smart, ambitious women get promoted and better paid, even if they hate office politics. And today we're going to talk about five steps to being assertive without being an a -hole. <laughs> okay? <laughs> this is going to be a lot of fun. So let's get started, all right? But by the way, I just wanna say, I coach assertive women and I love them. And I coach women who work for assertive women. And when, even when the client don't love the assertive women they work for, I coach them to be more assertive and ask for what they want. All right, so what is assertive, okay? We have a lot of preconceptions about it. We have our biases, our judgment, conclusions, opinions, but basically, you know, I looked up the word assertive in the dictionary and basically it's like, you confidently state what you want, you're forceful in your communication. And I think it just breaks down to these four simple things. You're clear on what you want. When you're assertive, you know what you want. You have a strong opinion you are able to have direct communication. You directly state what you want and you don't easily back down when you encounter pushback. Now, assertive is what can help you anchor. Anchor is just a fancy, you know, uh, psychology term for uh, telling people what you want, negotiation terminology for telling people what you want. And assertive people tend to anchor first. Now, um, if you've been watching my webinar Wednesdays for the past uh, couple months, you may know that I did a negotiation Q&A with my own mentor, uh, Victoria Pinchon. And Victoria Pinchon of She Negotiates, she taught me that when you negotiate, you got to anchor first. Like the person who tells the number first tips the negotiation in her favor. And this kind of goes against their people, uh, people who are for uh, stating the number and then the people who are against stating the first number in negotiation. And my mentor, Victoria, she's like, if you're assertive and you're clear on what you want, you have a strong opinion based on research, right? And on the value that you bring to this opportunity, you directly tell them what you want and you don't easily back down, right? So assertive people tend to anchor first and anchor high and that tends to tip the negotiation in her favor and we know this because um, the european journal of work and organizational psychology published a report just a couple years ago and they said that um, assertive women do make more money than passive and just an interesting tidbit about that research, really fascinating what they did was they surveyed the women, they asked them, you know, what, what do you make and how do you feel about it? And a certain women felt like, yeah, I make, okay, but I, I wanna make more. And non-assertive women said that they were happy with what they were making, even though they were not making more than assertive women or the men. So fascinating, isn't it? So just a tidbit, just a sidebar on that. Uh, okay. So I just got to ask, why don't we celebrate assertive women more? Like I was thinking based on my definition of assertive, right? You're just clear on what you want. You have a strong opinion. You directly state it. You don't easily back down, right? I'm like, assertive women are awesome. That's my strong opinion. My strong opinion is that assertive women are empowered women. Um, women are powerful, period. And rich women do good in the world. And when women have money, they invest it back in their families and the communities and companies benefit, right? I mean, there's research and data proving this. And then I wonder like, why don't we as a culture, as a society, just celebrate assertive women more? So I, you know, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on it, but um, my answer is, of course, we have some biases. We have some socialization and biases against assertive women. But before I go there, though, like I want to ask you, who are some assertive women that you admire and that you find inspiring? Like I was just listening to Beyonce right before I started the webinar, and you heard it. But I'm like, Beyonce, she is. Oh yeah, Emily says AOC. Damn straight, she is assertive. 
and we like to celebrate it. We definitely do. So why isn't it more like a common occurrence? Michelle Obama, yeah, yeah. Did you see her documentary, Becoming, on Netflix? It was so good, so good. I teared up. Yeah, we love a certain women. They are empowered women, and they, they you know, give us inspiration to have our own voice, to, to be more of ourselves, to celebrate our differences, yeah, and also to honor our desires, to be like, yeah, I can become who I want to become, and that, that is something that I want to do. That is something that, like, inspires me to, you know, go for my dreams. I think I just kind of made a circular statement there, but why don't we celebrate assertive women more, right? Like I think about my mom and my sister who are assertive and I know they're assertive because they're very clear on what they want. Every year for Christmas, for their birthday, they tell me exactly what they want. <laughs> and I have to say, I appreciate their assertiveness, even though I do find them intimidating. Right? That might be part of the reason why we don't celebrate them more. I do find them a little intimidating, but their assertiveness, their clarity around what they want saves me time <laughs> and saves me a headache when I go shopping for them. So, <laughs> All right, so we had some comments in the chat box because we want women to prioritize being likable. Okay, yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons I want, and I want to add, I, I, I don't, I totally hear what you're saying, Emily, and um, I want to offer that you know, the story that women have to prioritize being likable, that women have to be quiet, you know, be nice, um, take up as little space as possible to, you know, to be ashamed of their voice, of their bodies, you know, um, these are all like, you know, socialization that creates bias. Uh, and we encountered this bias, the stereotypes, right, right? And um, we encountered this bias both around the world, in the world, and I have to say, in ourselves. And I know this for a fact for me, because like I said, I just sometimes find very assertive women somewhat intimidating, right? If I didn't have this bias inside that women shouldn't be loud, <laughs> that women shouldn't be really clear and forceful and direct on what they want and stating what they want, then I wouldn't have that bias. Yeah? So it's just something to recognize. Yeah, we do encounter bias in the workplace. And sometimes where it's like really sinister is when we find it in ourselves, we don't recognize. Um, somebody says, evolution tells us that we can't be different and want more. That we can't be different and want more. I'm not sure what that means. Okay, but maybe um, like being loud. Evolution tells us that we can't be different and one more. Hmm, I want to. I will, I want to beg to differ. I think <laughs> maybe I'm misinterpreting your intention here. But I think evolvement, like being becoming more involved, helps us. You know, know that it's okay to be different. And we can want more. It's okay to be different. It's okay to want more. Like I'm thinking about my own life. When I first came to America 30 years ago, you know, I was the only Asian girl in my neighborhood and I felt very different and I didn't feel like, oh, maybe I don't belong. But as I evolved in my own life, within the span of my own life, I came to celebrate my difference and I, I I came to like know that it's okay for me to belong to me. That it's okay if other people don't see me as belonging in their group. As long as I belong to me, it's okay. And I can be different and people love that about me. I love that about me. And I can want more and it's okay to want more. And it's okay to be loud. <laughs> I, mean, I get told I'm loud all the time. <laughs> Do I get quiet? No, not really. <laughs> all right. but. We've, we've kind of been touching on this already, right? Like the primitive part of our brain, the brain, the part of our brain that never fully evolved from when we lived in caves, 
right? I call this part sometimes the itty bitty shitty committee because it sounds like they, you know, this part of the brain will be like, who do you think you are? You can't be assertive. People won't like you. Um, women are not supposed to do that, right? And this, this is the, the fear part of our brain, right? The part of our brain that doesn't want us to risk any sort of social rejection, even if that social rejection is pure projection in our own minds. And this is something that happens quite often. Like we, we get afraid of what other people will think. We get afraid of not being likable and that, that you know, we think, oh, people won't like me or my boss will have an opinion about me and, and then, you know, something bad's going to happen. Then we get afraid, right? It kind of feels like, oh my God, maybe I'll die if I raise my hand and state my strong opinion that is not like what everyone else is thinking. If I have my dissenting voice, if I state my dissenting uh, opinion, maybe I'll be left out of the tribe and nobody will like me. And this is the primitive brain. Right? I call it the itty bitty shitty community. And you combine bias and the primitive brain when they act together in conjunction, what happens as a result is you have the opposite of what AOC has <laughs> or uh, people like Michelle Obama has. You have assertive aversion. Like you don't want to be assertive or you, you shirk away, you like shirk away from being assertive on purpose. And how do you know that you have assertive aversion? So some, some of the things that I've seen happen with my own clients and in myself, right? I've been both pushy and a pushover. I've been assertive and I've also, you know, hidden from and you know, held back from saying what I've wanted. I, you know, it happens all the time for me. <laughs> like it happens like 50-50s, 50% 50 of the time like I'm assertive, I'm gonna get what I want. And half the time like ah you know, because I have the primitive brain, because I'm human. <laughs> So if you find yourself on either side of the spectrum, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. You are normal. You're a human who has, you know, you've been socialized into a culture and you have a brain. It doesn't mean anything has gone wrong with you. This is not to judge you, not to say anything has gone wrong, that there's something wrong with you, but it's just like to help us raise our awareness around why we have this and what happens when we have assertive Aversion. So what happens? Let's say there's somebody at work who is very assertive. This person dominates the meeting, always clear on what they want. They tend to get what they want. And um, maybe the consensus in the office is that this person is an a-hole or this person is a bulldozer. This is something one of my clients actually said about her female boss. She's like, I don't want to be like that bulldozer. Nobody likes her. <laughs> I want to be liked. Yeah. And so I'm reading this great book called How Women Rise. And in this book, the authors outline some of the 12 habits that hold women back from getting promoted, uh, getting raises. And one of the, the first habits that hold them back is not taking credit, not asserting um, the value that they bring, not, not claiming credit for their contributions. And one of the key reasons that the women that uh, these authors surveyed found out was that women said, I don't want to be like that arrogant asshole who's always patting himself on the back. Sorry, I cursed. <laughs> I hope there are no kids watching. <laughs> okay. So what happens is that you judge this person and there's like this moral judgment about this person usually a boss right and then you're like i don't i just want to be the opposite of this person because i disrespect this person okay or you wait for the right circumstances or you wait for like that right timing and i know you know people being furloughed and laid off and taking pay cuts and in certain industries right and in other industries people are busier than ever right but then there are people like this isn't the right time for me to ask and assert myself that's just wrong yeah again like this this element of moral judgment but then there are people who are like i just gotta time it right you gotta wait for the right circumstances after I've delivered those uh, key results, um, you know, when my boss is in a good mood or, you know, right before, you know, like, you know, things so that it's just right, 
you're waiting for the right timing. And what happens most often than not is that when you wait for the right circumstances, you often find yourself doing it wrong. Right? Because I mean, the right thing happens, the right timing or the right circumstance is what, like 1%, 2% of the time, for 98% of the time, you're like, I'm doing it wrong. And so then you lose confidence in yourself. Okay. And here's another thing that happens a lot, right? We kind of touched this already, like when the primitive brain is louder than the evolved prefrontal cortex part of your brain that knows how to plan ahead, like you worry more about what other people think. You worry about the worst possible scenario and it's a constantly looping in your head. And I just coached this client um, the other week. She's a leader. She's very ambitious, very like conscientious, um, driven, hardworking. But like I asked her, okay, so why aren't you doing the thing that's going to make your life and career so much better? And she's like, well, you know, I worry that people will think I'm not doing my job right. I'm like, okay, who's thinking this? And what are they saying? She's like, no one. <laughs> Okay, somebody who is a junior once sent me an email and she's like, oh, I found some grammatical errors. I'm like, okay, maybe this worrying about the worst possible scenario is a little bit blown out of proportion when you consider the facts, when you consider your reality. And this, again, this happens often, right? We, we have the fear brain and the fear brain loves to uh, tell stories and scare us with those stories. Even if the stories are just projected, you know, like images of the future, that's exactly what's happening when you worry about what other people think, right? Because we never know what other people are actually thinking. <laughs> it's just what we're thinking. And what we're thinking is the worst possible scenario is what's going to happen, right? So this happens a lot. And then what ha often happens as a result of these things is that people lie. Or you try to control what other people are thinking right? Because you're trying to quell the fear coming from your primitive brain. That's also, you know, kind of triggered by the bias that, you know, women need to be light, we need to be light in order to, for us to feel safe inside the tribe. Yeah. So people pleasing is just a form of like lying, right? People pleasing is not truly being honest with what you want, but like, okay, I'll, I'll do whatever you ask me to do because then that's how I'll get you to like me. Right. So, so it's just, it's kind of a subtle way. But, it, but um, it's a subtle way of trying to control other people's opinions. And we know that it is not very effective. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Or you just plain avoid having an opinion. You avoid stating your opinion. You avoid any sort of conflict, potential conflict. This, you know, people, this happens when people just stick their heads in the sand uh, or uh, they sh stop giving updates. Um, stop communicating with certain leaders just to avoid, you know, uh, being assertive out of fear of conflict, fear of being disliked, fear of uh, discomfort. And then, and then what happens as a result, well, what can happen as a result of like, right, you know, you're judging somebody, you are waiting for the right circumstances, you're worrying about the worst possible scenario, and out of this fear and worry, you people please or you avoid. And sometimes what happens is that this like resentment kind of builds up and it explodes. And that can look like you trying to stick up for yourself. Right? And, and like it's kind of like you think you're being assertive, but like you're really kind of like really venting anger and frustration. <laughs> Or you stick up for yourself in a confrontational way with, um, you know, this happened to me. <laughs> I'll tell you, like 10 years ago, I worked for a hedge fund and the hedge fund manager before I was brought on said that I would be reimbursed for training. And so I signed up to take the, what is it, the certified financial analyst exam. And it was a lot of money for me. It was like thousand dollars just to register for the one of three big and difficult exams and I'm like okay I gotta do this and I'm gonna stick it to the man I'm gonna I'm gonna go demand a reimbursement without doing what I now recommend to all of my clients which is to 
plan ahead and engage in a thoughtful, mature, right, responsible conversation. I'm like, I'm stick it to the man. So I like charged up to the hedge fund manager. I'm like, I demand reimbursement a thousand dollars in front of everyone. And of course he was embarrassed. So he's like, nope. He walked out of the office <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that didn't go like I wanted to go. Right? And I thought I was being assertive, but really, you know, I was acting out of assertive aversion because I have been, you know, judging people like those assertive people are like a-holes and I was waiting for the right circumstances. I, I didn't do this as much, <laughs> but I was definitely, I was in this, in this, uh, part of the list. And then when this wasn't working for me and I like, I was like sticking up for myself, but it didn't work. Right. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about this difference between sticking up for yourself and being like assertive without being an a-hole. But you know, when you find yourself like wanting to like stick up and like be confrontational and, and, and like prove people wrong. Right. And if that is your definition of assertive, that's not what we're talking about. And that's not really assertive. That's like wanting to blame and shame people, which was, you know, where unfortunately I was coming from unintentionally and it did not work. <laughs> so don't do that. Okay. So, so what happens when you do this? What happens as a result of all of this assertive aversion? So here are some symptoms. Right? Symptoms is you end up feeling exhausted. Like all that people pleasing, trying to control people's opinions or, or avoiding conflict or like judging and gossiping about people. Like it, this is exhausting. I know there are people who really don't like their bosses. Um, I was the last time I was at a restaurant, it's like three months ago in New York City, I was seated next to these two young women and it was a really nice restaurant, really good food. And the entire duration of like that hour and a half they were eating dinner, they were complaining about this one boss <laughs> that one of the two women work for. And she's like, oh, she did this, and oh, she did that. Well, like, damn, you're out of work and you're still complaining about your boss, like into the night. This is your free time. You don't have to be worrying and you know complaining, but here she was. And I bet that's really exhausting. And also the resentment grows, right? And that's not a pleasant emotion. It kind of burns in a negative way. And what happens as a result is often when people are in this negativity, that negativity kind of spills over into their self image. They don't like themselves. You don't like yourself. Like one of the reasons um, a client sought me out, she's like, no, I want to grow my career. And I, I don't like, that I don't like who I've become. I want to be able to like me more. Right. Also, when you are in assertive aversion, and I just want to add, that's what we work on. We work on self-confidence, self-love, right? Self-confidence from self-love. So you do like you and you become more authentic and genuine and confident in a positive way, not a negative way. Okay. So when you are assertive, um, you have assertive aversion, and um, what you do is you try to control people's opinion of you, or you avoid conflict at all costs, or you just plain lie, not tell your truth, not really be honest with your opinion, not show up to conversations. Uh, sometimes people stop giving communication updates. Um, it erodes confidence and trust in your relationship with others and with yourself. Right, because you're not honoring your true opinion. You're, you're not honoring what you truly want. And um, if you if you guys are all on my newsletter list, you would also know this grows your self advocacy debt. And self advocacy debt is simply when your true potential is not matched by where you are in terms of your career growth, uh, income, satisfaction. Right? It's because you haven't assertively told people express the value and the vision that you have for where you can go. Okay, so why does it happen? You know, at the, at the root of it, it's a brain issue, right? You perceive being assertive as a moral issue, like that a-hole, that bulldozer, or, you know, B <laughs> with four asterisks, right? You perceive it as, you know, you're right or wrong. 
And what happens is when you judge people like this, you know, you when you judge people, it's a projection of um, your what you're thinking, obviously. But also, have you noticed that, um, like, when you judge people like this, like, you worry about you, where you fit in that uh, moral spectrum. Like, am I doing it wrong? Am I doing it right? Am I being bad? Am I being good? Right? So it's like, becomes like, am I good or bad kind of issue? And then it reflects on you and your self-confidence. So it, you lose self-confidence in yourself. Yeah, that's what self-confidence is. Sorry, I'm being repetitive right now. <laughs> Sorry about that. But also, what happens um, is that you're seeing being assertive as like a win-lose thing. Um, win lose as in like, if I am assertive, then that can hurt people. Or when others are assertive, that hurts me. Yeah. So it's like a, you either win or you lose. And when you think of it this way, it's easy to see yourself in a position of weakness rather than strength. And you're like, oh, that person in the office, that that boss, he's assertive. I'm not. So that must mean that I'm losing the game. So it, it impacts how you see you and your, your power in the relationship, right? This is the reason why. So how do we fall for this? Okay. So my solution, the five steps to being assertive without being an a-hole is really simple. Anyone can do this. Okay. You can start implementing this right away. And the five key things, first, you gotta stop. Second, you gotta decide. Third, you gotta find. Fourth, you take. And fifth, you celebrate, okay? Stop, decide, find, take, and celebrate, okay? So let's go, let's dive right into this. Okay, so first thing you gotta stop. You gotta stop using judgment against you. I'm not gonna say stop judging because we are all human. We all have brains and our brains will always judge. <laughs> I would love to be like, just stop judging, okay? Stop judging people. I know people love to say that, but it's just not realistic. As long as we have our brains, as long as we have our perceptions, as soon as we see people on the street, we, as soon as we encounter uh, dominant um, or you know very specific type of personalities in the workplace, or or you see a woman wearing these green beads around her neck, you'd be like, I have an opinion about that. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay for you to have an opinion. Maybe you have an opinion about my glasses. It's fine. It's only human for us to have thoughts, and some of those thoughts are judgmental of other people. Like sometimes we can like help it. Like as soon as you see somebody, you're like right? That doesn't make you wrong. Just don't use that judgment against you. Yeah. Don't be like, I can't be like that able. If I speak up, if I assert myself, then that immediately means that I am bad, that I'm like that a-hole, right? So stop using that judgment against you. And also don't underestimate the power that you have and other people have in any given situation. One of the reasons that um, we have assertive aversion is that you think that being assertive is like a win-lose game. If I speak up, then that means I'm stepping on toes. My, it says my internet stable connection is unstable, so I'm gonna pause. All right, we're good, all right. You underestimate your power in the situation, but you could also underestimate other people's power to respond, to be resourceful, to be resilient in a situation where you or somebody else is being assertive. Let's say you're in a meeting and somebody is dominating the conversation and you're like, well, that means that I don't have power in the situation. That means that like, I didn't get to have a say, but that, that, that is a way of underestimating your own power, your resourcefulness. If you were resourceful and you're like, I still have power, I still have a voice, you can like, okay, let me think of ways to send an email communication as a follow-up so I can send them my recommendations, right? You don't have to see that one conversation as the decider of whether you have power or not. So don't underestimate your power. Also, don't force a reaction when you are assertive, when you are clear on what you want, you have a strong opinion, you directly say what you want and don't easily back down. You don't necessarily have to force other people to have the kind of reaction that you want, 
right? This, this is doing this one thing will be like the key to all of the following steps. And I know this is probably the hardest part. And this is something that I help my clients do every day so that they can lose the attachment to a specific reaction from other people, because this is a way to give away your power in a very subtle but sinister way. Yeah. If you think, oh, if I assert myself in the office and they have to give me the respect, they have to give me the pay that I want, and they don't, and then they're like, oh, I'm disappointed. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should just give up, right? I mean, this sort of thing happens often. So you don't force a reaction, but you use that um, assertiveness, your assertive action as an opportunity to learn and to improve and to just get curious, right? Instead of forcing a reaction. So I'll talk more about that as we go. All right. So the second thing that you do after you stop using judgment against you, forcing a reaction, and what was the second thing? I forget. <laughs> okay, you decide. You decide powerfully what is the opinion you want to have about you. By the way, if you have decided right now, this moment, that you are an assertive woman or assertive man, you can do that. You can do that right now. You can just decide, you know what, from now on, I'm gonna con my opinion is that I am assertive, I am powerful, I like growing my career, I like making money, I like, I like leading projects, that's my opinion. You can do that. No one can stop you. Your opinion, what you think, what you believe about you, only you have power over that. And no one can stop you from believing anything about you. This is the secret to self-confidence, right? Self-confident people, they just have a very strong opinion of, and a high one of themselves, as you could too. You just decided to. And also you decide to take action, to be assertive, not for you right now, not for your current self, but for the sake of your future self. I, I wrote recently about um, the negotiation that I engaged in was it like six years ago when I uh, last worked for a company. Um, I'm so grateful. I was assertive and I'm like, I want to make six figures. I want to make $100,000. And they're like, no, we're not going to give you that. That's not what you were making before. This is before New York City implemented the rule of forbidding uh, employers asking about prior salaries. And so I'm so grateful. I am the future self to my past self and I'm so grateful to my past self as her future self that I was assertive back then, right? Even though back then it was really uncomfortable. I was nervous, was worried they were gonna like me. Yeah, I have a brain too, right? As a future self, I'm very grateful. So decide to be assertive on behalf of your future self. Think about like, what does my future self three years, five years, you know, beyond this pandemic, uh, what would my future self like? Would she like some more money? Would she like more career opportunities? You know, would she like some, you know, varied experiences? Would she like to lead her own project, have her own team? Yeah, would she like to be married? Would she like to have kids? So you have to, you know, think ahead what would my future self like? How can I, you know, set my future self up for success? And what would I need to do? What opinions would I have to get clear on? What would I have to, what um, desires might I have to express clearly to give my future self what she wants? And also, this is the thing that's so important, okay? This is clean fuel. Decide to use assertive as a clean fuel. Like think of, think of um, your life and career as like the car that you drive. Maybe you drive a Toyota Prius. Maybe you drive a BMW. Maybe you drive an Audi, a Mercedes. Doesn't matter. Any car you like, right? But you want to put in the best fuel possible for this car to keep driving, keep going forward, right? You don't want to put in like something dirty, a dirty fuel that you put in the car and then it like gets all mucky in the engine and then the, and then the engine starts, you know, heating up, overheating, and then it blows up, 
right? And then it's a mess, right? You don't want to do that. You want to use clean fuel, right? So when you use assertive, when you decide to use assertive as a clean fuel, you know it because of how it makes you feel. Okay, I'll say it again. When you use assertive as a clean fuel, you know the difference because of how you feel. Like, do you feel decisive? Do you feel powerful, empowered, authoritative? Like I, I coach my clients, women clients to embody authoritative, right? To um, disassociate being authoritative as something bad, but it's something powerful as uh, women leaders are capable of embodying. Like when you think about AOC, uh, Michelle Obama, Beyonce, they're authoritative in their field of expertise, right? We don't, we don't consider them morally wrong. And also you feel clear, you feel genuine, you feel honest, you feel brave, you feel courageous, right? It feels clean, like it, it empowers you and helps you drive forward maybe even determined or committed, right? That's how you know you're using clean fuel. But if you're not, when you're not using clean fuel, if you're using dirty fuel, you feel different. You feel emotion that kind of burns you and leaves you feeling exhausted, resentful, angry, enraged, disappointed, adamant, pushy, needy, greedy, like tight, like this, when you're sort of like this, that's not clean fuel. You know it. <laughs> you know it from the way it feels inside. Okay. So this is the work I help my clients do, my one-on-one -on -one clients, to help them decide powerfully who do they want to be, what opinion do they want to have of themselves. You know that you are valuable, that you are unique, that you are an asset. You have important things to say. You have potential, right? This is the kind of opinions you want to have. And opinions, you can build your opinion. You make them strong. Nobody's just born with a strong opinion. You build your strong opinion for you, by you, with practice. And that's the work I help my clients do. Love it. Okay. And then after you've decided, you got to find these things. you got to find evidence. You're gonna find money and bossy. This is something that I borrowed from my other mentor, Lisa Gates. And you gotta find your own style, your own style of being assertive, okay? So find evidence, look in your past. This is a great research by Stony Brook University and I think it was Carnegie Mellon. They did this uh, study and they found that when women remind themselves three times in the past how they were assertive, and they were assertive of what they want in the past. This is a great way to build your confidence right before you negotiate, okay? So I, I wanna invite you after you get off this call, like I want you to sit down and like write down like when have I been really clear with what I want? When have I like been really direct about what I wanted? And it could be in your career, it could be in your personal life, Right? I asked five boys to the prom. I was very assertive. Um, I, even my life partner right now, like I found him online and I reached out like, hey you, right? I was pretty assertive. Maybe you have done that too. Maybe you've been really assertive. I don't know, maybe with the way um, you, um, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of something like, you're assertive when it comes to very specific areas in your life, when it comes to things that you really love. Like if you're a fan, of a certain artist, like you're really assertive about like, you know, being that artist fan. Or um, maybe when you, um, I just coached this client who uh, she, she, she works in PR and communication, communication, and she got this fantastic job in Canada by writing love letters directly to companies that she was like, wow, I love what you do. And I think it's fantastic. And if there's a way for me to contribute, I would love to do that. So she wrote them directly. That was assertive, right? So look for evidence in your own past. List them. And then think about what was I thinking that made me do that? How was I feeling that helped me be assertive in my communication and expression of my desires, okay? That will help you build your confidence. And I'm willing to bet that you will find at least three, if not more. Okay, 
money in Bossy. Find the money in Bossy. Remember when Sheryl Sandberg had this campaign against Bossy because, you know, Bossy is a word that gets used to kind of like label assertive women. Like, you shouldn't be girl, you shouldn't, shouldn't be bossy. So my mentor, Lisa Gage, she was like, you know, let's turn that on its head because you know what? Assertive women make more money, yeah? So when you find the evidence of you having been assertive in the past, you can be like, I can do it again. I can tap into that energy and that desire, that clarity again. And I can find money in bossy, yeah? And you'll also get to find your own style. Like, I, I think... The reason why um, women, and, and I know this happens to men too, are reluctant to be assertive is because they think assertive is either or. Either you're assertive like that a-hole that you don't like or you're not. But what if there are like a thousand and one different flavors of being assertive in the world? I was thinking about this and I just recently saw uh, this fabulous documentary about Fred Rogers. Do you know Mr. Rogers? If you don't, look him up. <laughs> Mr. Rogers, um, uh, he was the producer, host, and creator of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, a wonderful children's programming that ran for many decades on PBS. And in this documentary, they showed a short video clip of when Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was uh, was almost going to lose its funding from the federal government. Was, um, the federal go government funding was under threat. And so Mr. Rogers went to Washington, went to uh, the committee here, the Senate committee hearing, and then he had to assert why Mr. Rogers needs to stay on PBS. Okay, and Mr. Rogers is, is not your typical macho guy. He's like the polar opposite of this macho, you know, what you think is like assertive with a capital A. But he was assertive. He was very clear on what he wanted. He directly stated the value, the impact, the mission of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Right? He looked the senator in the eye and he made his strong opinion clear in a very compelling way. He, he was assertive in his own style. So I mean, if Mr. Rogers can be assertive, so can you, yeah? Because you, your own style is gonna be authentic and genuine to you. It doesn't have to look like anyone else's brand of assertive. You can be assertive in your own way. And your own style of assertive can look like, you know, just you saying no to an extra errand. You saying no to an extra meeting that is going to take up all of your time, but it's not really gonna help you know, drive your results forward, right? Or your own style of assertive could be like my sister, you know, just tells me what she wants. She sends me the shopping link and then I buy it and I send it to her. Or you know, your own style is your own style. You can't do it wrong. All right, so let's move on. So once you have found evidence, you have found money and bossy, you have found your own style, you're gonna take action. You're gonna take committed action, right? You're gonna decide for you what your brand of uh, assertive is and what that um, looks like. And if you were really clear on what you wanted, you would know what action to take. And it doesn't, it's not the same for everyone else. It's unique to you. Maybe it's saying no. Maybe it's raising your hand at the next Zoom meeting. Maybe it's volunteering to um, set up the next Zoom session or Google Hangout or Facebook meeting <laughs> um, or, it could be anything, it could be like, you know, asking a gutsy question, right? Maybe um, addressing some concerns, uh, maybe um, recommending a course of action that you think would be best, even if, you know, there will be dissenters, even if people will disagree, just you take courage. And remember, courage is not a comfortable or a pretty emotion. It's, it's kind of raw because you have to feel the fear, because we all have the primitive brain. You're gonna have to feel the fear, do it anyways. Do it afraid is courage, right? So you gotta um, stop using judgment against you. You gotta decide what your opinion is, what you want, right? You gotta find your own style, find evidence for your assertiveness, and then you take committed action. 
you break it down into little chunks. And sometimes it, it's sort of assertive can just look like stating your opinion and not trying to force everyone to agree with you, okay? And so, again, this is the work that I help my clients do on a consistent and weekly basis from a mindset of strength, from a mindset of self-confidence, okay? And then, finally, the last step is you gotta celebrate. You gotta celebrate every action, even if it's like uh, raising your hand like this, and um, even if it's like, you know, saying something at a meeting and nobody hears it, you took action, we celebrate it, okay? You give yourself credit for taking assertive action. Maybe, you know, your, your level of assertiveness is just, uh, um, I, had a, I, I have one client who actually was already pretty assertive and um, she was transitioning jobs and she went from one bank to another and she was asking for some general negotiation advice so i gave it to her i'm like you know in general people uh when they change jobs they generally ask for like 20 25 percent more than their past salary and she's like oh that's great advice and then she's like i'm gonna ask for 50 percent more <laughs> and so she ended up asking for double what i what i recommended and she ended up getting it that it ended up being like $200,000 more in her total compensation package. So we celebrated the heck out of that. I mean, she was clear, she was gutsy, she took action, she anchored, right? She asked for it and she got it. That's the lesson for her. But maybe, you know, in your action, it can look like something different. You take action and you learn about how to engage better with people at work. Maybe you learn, you know, what resonates and what doesn't, what lands and what doesn't, or you learn how to ask better questions, right? So, so that every time you take action, you first celebrate it, right? And we celebrate all of the things that are uh, going well for you. And then from there, we also ask, okay, what are we learning? What can we do better next time? Like the lesson I learned is I didn't know how to spell this word. <laughs> I had to just <laughs> cross it out. So that every time you take action, you grow. You evaluate the action and you grow. Again, this is the work that I do with my one-on-one -on -one clients every week. So if you like this, I invite you invite you to consider working with me one-on-one. -on -one. My coaching program is six months. And in six months, we meet once a week over Zoom calls like this, but privately. And I help my clients with both strategy and mindset. I cover, you know, I help my clients uh, prepare for interviews. I help them build confidence. I help them with negotiation. I help them with dealing with difficult people, politics personal things. Um, I had a couple of clients who, um, you know, were impacted by COVID and I helped them build confidence and clarity around how they will reinvent their career and move forward with confidence. And I have one client who, uh, you know, is writing a book and I help you with that. I have another client who is launching her side business. Yeah, she's decided this is the best time for me to brainstorm how I want to be my own boss. So I'm helping her with that too. So ultimately it's all about helping you become more assertive, more confident, you know, fueled by that, you know, clean emotion of, of self-appreciation, self-esteem and um, self-empowerment. Uh, so if you would like uh, to consider working with me, I invite you to submit a really quick application. I have spots open for three consultation. Consultation is a free conversation between you and me. We will book uh, a whole hour together and I will help you identify, you know, whether there are mindset gaps, whether there is a strategy gap. So you know exactly how to bridge the gap from where you are now to where you want to go, where, you're, where you want your future self to go. And I'll help you identify the mindset gaps, 
um, and how you can bridge that gap. So even if you don't decide to work with me, and I hope you will, but if, whether or not you do, you will gain a valuable insight from this one conversation. And I have three spots open, so you can either email me direct at jamie at jamieleecoach.com or you can go to here and submit a really quick application jamieleecoach.com slash apply and submit a quick application to have a free conversation with me so do you have any questions okay emily shelton says the consultation alone is very helpful yes i i have you know, clients have told me the consultation alone gave them a transformation. Uh, consultation alone, they found something really valuable that helped them like move forward. And of course, if you want to continue, we'll talk about it, talk about how we will structure your, your own custom coaching program. Like every coaching program is bespoke to you and your specific needs. And I am available once every week and over email to support you and help you achieve the result that you most want. Okay, who has questions? I will wait. Any questions so far? All right. How can we practice being confident every day? Ask yourself, what would I, what would I do if I were confident? And make it something that like kind of scares you a little bit, but helps like helps you feel a little expansive when you think about getting it done. And then do it every day. So stretch, uh, stretch your comfort zone and take action every day. And think about like, how would I see me? What, would, what is the opinion that I would have of me if I were truly confident? Would you please tell us once again how to apply your 101 session? Oh, oh, okay. So you can either um, just email me direct or you can go to jamieleecoach.com slash apply. No, I'll, I'll send the link to you and then you will um, submit a really quick application form. You just tell me like, what is the result you want, right? Uh, what do you want to discuss in the consultation? And then I'll follow up with you so that we can have a one-on-one -on -one chat. Okay, so it is, here's the link, jamieleecoach.com slash apply. All right, great question, thank you. Okay, so just to review one more time, the five steps to being assertive without being an a-hole, <laughs> stop using judgment against you. Okay, and decide on what opinion you want to have of yourself, decide uh, what you will do, what you will um, do on behalf of your future self, right? Find evidence of your dormant assertiveness. We all have an assertive side. We all have like a wild, ferocious, powerful side. We all do. We are all powerful women. We have that in all of us. So you gotta just go look for the evidence that you have it. When you look for it, you'll find it. You find your own style. And then you take committed action. You take courage, right? It's not comfort with which you take committed action, it's with courage. And then you celebrate the heck out of it. And this is all, this is the work that I do with my one-on-one -on -one clients every single week. And by the end of it, you will be different. You will have transformed as a result. You will see yourself differently. You will feel about you differently. You'll feel differently about your career. You will be taking different actions, right? I have clients who started coaching and they're like, you know, I feel, oh, you're most welcome, Heel. She's based in South Korea. That's where I'm from. Yeah, I'm so glad you were able to get a great morning start. You're most welcome, Catalan. So again, I welcome you to have a conversation with me. 
to see if coaching with me would be a great fit for you. Like has to be a slam dunk fit. Otherwise we don't, um, will this session be shared? I'd love to share it with my friends. So of course, of course, I'll send you the recording. Thank you so much for asking. Yeah, I'd be happy to send you the recording. So um, yes, I will send the replay. If you have any other questions, this is the time. And I just want you to think about like, before we wrap up, like what would be the impact of you being like 10% more assertive in your career and in your life? Just 10%, right? You don't have to be 50% or 100% more assertive, but just like 10, just a little bit more assertive, more assertive when it comes to sharing your opinion, sharing your ideas, sharing your proposal, more assertive in talking about the progress you're making in your projects. Like I have this one client, she's based in Africa and she's a telecom executive and she's just more, she became more assertive giving updates, giving updates on projects that are not even complete. And she said this has helped her with her confidence and this is helping her be seen as a thought leader, as somebody who is on top of her stuff and she's getting tasked to, you know, create business plans and she's, you know, like she's being seen and heard. Right? And this is just her changing one thing, being willing to talk about the progress she's making in a project even before they're done. Right? She's very results oriented, so she used to hesitate giving updates and stuff like that. But just that like, little bit of more assertiveness in talking about her projects is having a huge impact on her career. And so imagine what the impact would be for you like being seen, being heard, being recognized, being respected. Because you know what assertive leaders appreciate? Assertiveness. Yeah? All right. Say a bit more about forming an opinion of ourselves. This seems to be a big roadblock. That is useful. Okay. You can decide to have a different opinion about you. We, we are so accustomed to hearing the voice of our itty bitty shitty committee. Right? But you know, the, the intention of our itty bitty shitty committee, the primitive brain is not evil. It's, its intention is not to cause us pain and misery and doubt. It's intention, true intention is to keep us safe, but it'll always offer us some like, oh, you're not good enough. Who do you think you are? You're too sloppy, right? And I was thinking like when I did this webinar, like who's gonna show up? No one's gonna show up. Like I had that thought, right? It's just the itty bitty shitty committee thought. <laughs> So you can, you can watch those thoughts and just let them go by. Like you, you know, you read the ticker tape, you can decide on purpose to think new thoughts about you. You can decide on purpose to have a better opinion about you. On purpose, you can decide to think I am proud that I showed up. I am proud of the work that I'm doing. I am making progress. You can directly, you can intentionally shift the brain's focus to where you want the focus to be. Do you want to see yourself as somebody who is accomplished? Then you look for all the ways you are accomplished so that you can think I am accomplished. But you know what, to be honest, you don't even need the evidence. <laughs> Like an opinion that I have about me is that I'm a beast of intention. Like when it comes to like having intention to do good, to serve my clients, uh, to help them get results, to for me to grow, like my inten in terms of the intention I have for me to grow past my limiting beliefs is like, I'm a beast at that. I have like so much intention. And when I'm driven by that intention to grow and to serve, I am capable of anything. I am really powerful. Ooh. I love that. I love that opinion about myself. And you can borrow my opinion. You can have that opinion too, right? You don't need the evidence from the external world. You don't even need it from your past. You can just decide, you know what? I am hot shit. You can think that. No one can take that away from you. That is your freedom, ultimate freedom. So I hope that answers your question, Carolyn. All right, well, excellent question. Please, um, again, would you like to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me, come to jamieleecoach.com slash apply, or just email me direct. We'll set up a time. I have some uh, time this week too, and we'll talk, we'll chat.
All right. So if there are no more questions, I'm going to wrap this up. I will send a replay. Thank you, everyone, for showing up on this beautiful day to um, engage and to learn the five simple steps that you can apply starting today to be more assertive without being an a-hole. Have a great day. All right. Bye-bye.